Good morning, everyone who is tuning into the broadcast, the live streaming broadcast of the Phoenix Seventh-day Baptist Fellowship located in Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome to those on the East Coast, the West Coast, and everywhere in between. And those of you who are here this morning watching live a message from God's Word. I'm Pastor Daryl Chilson. And I am so glad to be before you this morning. I wish I could see your faces someday. Maybe I'll be able to do that. I'd like to begin with prayer. Father in heaven, this morning, we gather in your name from all around the United States and perhaps other countries. We are your children. You have redeemed us. You have called us to be yours. We have come together in your name to study your holy word. I pray that your spirit will be present with us. In Jesus' name. I've chosen as my theme text this morning, the very text that I used nearly seven months ago when this little fellowship began, September 7, 2019. It's been almost seven months since we've been meeting together what a sweet fellowship we have had. Now, the circumstances in the world are such that we aren't able to meet like we used to, at least for now. We don't know how long that will be. But in spite of the, in spite of the restrictions that have been placed upon us due to the COVID-19 virus in our world, we are now learning how to do something different for the Lord by speaking to you via the streaming uh, technology. Hopefully this will be something that will be good for all of us and we will be able to communicate better, God. I pray that you will be blessed from our study today. And we are studying specifically from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 9. If you have your Bible nearby, I would recommend that you get it so that you can follow along as we look at two or three other texts as well. But this is our theme text, and it just happens to be my very favorite text in the whole Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 9, and it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might be rich. It's the story of the exchange of his life and his death for us in our poverty and sin, giving us credit, all that he did, Exchange for our faith in him as he took credit for all that we have done and all that we have been all our lives. It is the story of the great exchange, one life for another. Over 20 years ago, I was privileged to pastor in a little town of Livermore, California, where my first elder, John, name was John. John had a story that illustrates that which we want to talk about this morning. John was a soldier in Vietnam. Perhaps others who are watching will be able to relate to this story even better than I was not there during that. John was part of a the first cavalry and the Bravo and Echo companies were serving with him in Vietnam. It was August 12, 1968, about a half a mile from Cambodia. John had been manning the mortar gun for his unit all night long. And as he stepped away from the gun, from the mortar, and his Relief took his place. He sat down 
to rest. Take, he was taking his boots off. 3.30 a.m., his relief was there on time, and he stepped away from the mortar, sat down, began to take his boots off, and at 3.35 a.m., a mortar broke the silence. Stan, his partner, his companion there in that unit, was hit by a mortar and struck dead immediately. John told me, as he had told others who shared this story with him, and hit by the mortar. He had just stepped away from the gun after having been there all night on guard. He always spoke of that occasion as a story of one man giving his life for him. An exchange of a life for a life. And that's what our text and our story is about this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, that's an understatement. Yet for your sakes, he became poor. And that also is an understatement that through his poverty, through his condescension to take our place in life and in death, we might share in his riches, in all that was his. He took what was ours, that we might have what was his. Jesus took our sin, not just the things that we have done, but the, the, the part of us that has the sin nature. We have sin natures that we're born with. He took upon himself, not our sin nature, but our nature as human beings. And he took the sin that was ours and the sins that we had committed. And he claimed them as his own on Calvary that we might claim his righteousness, his life, his death as our very own, and in so doing, be safe for eternal life, share in his inheritance throughout eternity, all that was his. I grew up in a Christian home, and perhaps you did too, and one of the very first verses that you ever learned, no doubt, was John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not sin. But I never knew how his death for my sins could have affected eternal life for me. He was completely outside of me. He was another person. How could another person, albeit God himself in the person of Christ, how could another person's life be credited as mine? How could another person's death be credited as mine? How could my life, my sin, be credited to him who was sinless? This is the great exchange that heaven has given us that we might have all that we never earned because Jesus Christ earned it for us. One life for another. And our death became his at Calvary. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 and verse 8, Romans, the great book of the Bible that shares with us an understanding of the gospel story and how we can understand what Jesus did for us more than just the simple Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died on the cross for me. It's more complete and it's richer than just one verse that says he died for me. We might believe in him. What does it mean to believe in Christ? It means to believe the story of how he took our place. That we might have his. 
2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. You know the grace. I never get tired saying these words. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you and I, through his poverty, rich, rich, going to talk a little bit, a moment about what that might mean. But in Romans chapter 5 and verse 6, it says, When we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. The ungodly. You find yourself in that camp. I have the ungodly. In verse 8, God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I love the verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where we will turn next. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. It says, For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, if one died for all, then all died. Where were you that day when Christ was on the cross? Where were you? Some of you have heard of the hymn and maybe have sung it before. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? I was there. You were there. We were there in him as he died in our place. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians, the love of Christ compels us. This story is a story that drives us, that drives our lives as Christians, that turns our world around, that turns our eyes away from our sin and helps us to understand that all that is Christ is ours now because of that great exchange that took place 2,000 years ago. The love of Christ compels us because if one died for all, then all die. And then he says down in verse 21, for God made him who knew no sin. He was the sinless one who could die the eternal death and still come forth from the grave. There was nothing to keep him there for it was not his sin, though he claimed it as his own, our sin. For God made him him who knew no sin, it says, to be sin for us, that we might be the very righteousness of God in him. Isn't that a beautiful passage? Looking back in our lives, we can look back. Just the other day, Sammy and I, my wife, were looking at some pictures from way back. Pictures from Waldorf, Maryland. Pictures from Livermore, California. Pictures from Tubac, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona, where we pastored. Looking at pictures that brought back sweet, sweet memories. Pictures from Novato, California. From Sonoma, California. People that we have loved. People that we have shared life with sweet memories. You can look back in your life and you can find those moments of sweetness. But if you're like me, you can also look back in your life and recall poor choices, regret, disappointment, even with God. Have you ever been disappointed with God? There have been times in my life where I have wondered where God was. I've wondered why the promises that I saw in his word were not being fulfilled in my life like I thought they should be. Have you ever felt like you missed out on something in life? Maybe you wanted to go to a particular part of the world. I've always wanted to go to Italy and find the family that my wife, Amy, has come from. She had grandparents that came from Italy to America and settled in America. I've always wanted to meet her family. 
but I've never had that opportunity, and I never will probably until we have a chance to meet them in heaven. We've missed out on some things in life, some things about us and about our life we can change. Other things we can't change. We can't change some things in our life. But in our life, there is one constant. If we are Christ, if we have placed our faith in him, there's one constant, constant. And that is his life. His life is a constant for us. His life is what's going to give us a right to eternal life in the judgment. I often think of the judgment day. Yes. I think to myself, what is it going to be like to stand before the great judgment bar of God? And it's almost like I'm standing there in this humongous crowd of people as God sits at this great judgment bar. I mean, this is kind of a picture that we get when we talk about the judgment, great throne judgment. And as I'm standing there shaking, trembling, and feeling so unworthy to be a part of the gift of heaven, my name is called Daryl by the great judge. Daryl, will you please stand up? Oh, I stand up. I stand up shaking. I'm afraid to stand up. I don't want to stand up. I don't want to face the life that I have lived in the judgment. But over here in the sideline is another man, capital M, another man that stands up and says, I'm Daryl. I'm Daryl. And the father takes the record of his life and he looks at it. He spreads it out in front of him. You're my son. Welcome to the gates of the city. Welcome to heaven. Welcome to eternal life. I am unworthy to be there, but someone else was worthy for me. So let's look at this text again. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 8 and verse you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But though he was rich, what does that mean, he was rich? Oh, rich. There's a passage in Hebrews chapter 1 that shows how rich, how worthy, how wealthy in terms of standing, in terms of power, in terms of God-likeness, for he is God. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Turn with your Bibles with me. Turn in your Bibles with me to that verse. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. And it says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, it's talking about the scriptures. God has spoken to us in times past through the scriptures, through the Old Testament, because as Paul was writing Hebrews, he was looking back at the Old Testament, the prophets, fathers. He spoke to us and he spoke to the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom, get this, this is how, how we know how rich and Powerful, how wonderful Jesus Christ is. He has spoken to his son by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Think about that. This man, Jesus Christ, who took my place and your place on Calvary's cross, died our death after having lived a perfect life for us, to be credited to our account. This is the one who in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. Think about it. 
Jesus Christ, the creator of the heavens and the earth. When you think about the heavens, you can think about the earth, the beautiful flowers that we see. Sammy and I were just looking at some, if you can believe there are cactus that are actually beautiful out here in Phoenix. Went to a park where cactus were growing just a day or two ago. They were already starting to flower. They were beautiful flowers, yellow, purple flowers on these cactus. You look at a flower and it's so dainty. Some of them are so fine, so incredibly beautiful. He created them. Think about the human being, the heart, how it beats, eyes, how they see. God created those things. Jesus created them. So we can look at the micro creation of some of these things that we see and that we are, that we have the bodies that are ours. Think of the heavens. God created the heavens and the earth the massive distance that exists between one planet and another, between one galaxy. He flung the stars in space. And it says in Isaiah, he knows every one of them. He has called them by name. Every star in the Many of them that we can't even see with a microscope. He is appointed as the heir of all things, through whom also he made. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, Jesus of God, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of this is the one who came as a baby to Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, took upon himself, became a part of our family. And then as he grew, he lived our life perfectly. He died our death, the death that we deserve. He died that for us. This one who was so rich and who became so poor that we in our poverty and lostness might possess all. We might become rich, Paul said. Today, as we think about this passage, about the implication of what it is that Jesus did in this great exchange for us, he came to us gave us all that was his, took all that was ours. Today, I say this, today, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, we stand perfect. We stand ready for Jesus to come. And in these times, as we see the things that are going on in our world, it can't help but remind us that his coming is near. Are you ready for Jesus to come? If you are his, if you have placed your faith, you are ready to come. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, all of those hear this message, I pray that you will draw their hearts to you. Lord God, may the, the story of your life on this earth, your death, in us, may it touch our hearts and stir within us a faith and a confidence that in you we have everything. We have inherited everything. We have inherited eternal life. We have inherited a perfect record before the great judge of the universe. It's ours now because he took ours. He took our record and paid the price. 
Make this story real to us, I pray, today. We ask 